it's getting late into the evening here, we will go ahead and get started. So I am uh, very excited to welcome everybody to part three of our career development and goal setting workshops um, being presented by Heather Dillon, who is the career and professional development program manager in the postdoctoral um, and, and research scholar affairs office at the uh, UC San Diego. So um, uh, Heather is going to be uh, presenting on, you know, why it's important to have a career plan and this will uh, align with the uh, two prior sessions that she ran where it was more um, looking at your skills and interests and trying to align those with potential career paths that you might be interested in. So she's going to be tying things all together in today's um, session. And this session represents the, the, low, the last final session of our The Whole Scientist uh, uh, professional development workshop series. So we're really pleased to have Heather with us to close out our um, Whole Scientist series this spring. So without any further delay, I'll turn things over to Heather. Thanks so much, Sarah, and thank you everyone for joining me today for, as Sarah said, this last session in my series and also the last session in the whole scientist for this term. So for those of you who are just joining us, if you could go ahead and pop some answers into the chat about why you think it's important to have a career plan. Some of your fellow participants have already shared some of their ideas. So including that, um, you know, setting goals makes it easier for you to view your career process, progress and navigate your career path, path. Um, it helps you to set sights on something you hope to accomplish, that you won't spend time, won't waste time trying to figure it out as you go. So having a plan helps you to be smart with your time management and use your time effectively. So we'll see if anyone else had any other thoughts on why having a career plan might be important. And as with all of the other presentations, you know, feel free to unmute yourself at any point if you'd rather share something verbally, that's totally okay. So figuring out what you need to develop, staying focused. So helping you to achieve your goals by setting a timeline, definitely. So yeah, so, you know, Having a plan is important because getting where you want to go requires a plan. You know, most PhDs or most individuals with advanced degrees are employed, but it's likely that the jobs that you're most interested in will be competitive. And so, you know, to get a job that you want to have and where you'll really thrive, you need to have a plan to help you get there. So the process of setting goals helps you to get where you want to go in life. Uh, but before you can make a plan, you first need to figure out where it is that you want to go. And that's why we started um, this whole series, right, with talking about self-reflection and career exploration to help us answer this very question and why these steps are also part of overall career planning process, which sometimes you hear referred to as IDP or Individual Development Plan. And this is a process by which you manage your individual career development by going through these different steps, you know, assessing your skills, values, and interests, exploring career options, and then developing goals that you discuss with your mentors. So the IDP is really your plan to get you where you want to go. And so as we've gone through this series, we've taken you through the different steps in developing your plan or your IDP. And so we started with talking about self-assessment, and then we went on to talk about career exploration. And so now we're going to talk about the next step in this plan, which is setting goals. And so going through your self-assessment and career exploration process helps you to determine your priorities and the direction you want to head career-wise, which will define your longer-term career goals that match your values, interests, and abilities. And I would like to make a side note here that as you do this, it's important to make sure that your long-term goals are the ones that you genuinely want to achieve, not ones that others want for you or think would be right for you. And so, uh, you know, it's understandable that you might value or want to hear the opinions or thoughts of those closest to you or those who you respect and admire, uh, but you still want to make sure that you remain true to yourself and that what you're setting is that 
you know, longer term career goal is what you really want, you know, for your career destination. So these longer term career goals or career destinations are usually ones that you work to achieve over several years. So again, this is what we mean by longer term. Um, and to do this, you're gonna set short-term goals that will serve as milestones to achieving that long-term goal. And so a long-term goal might include, you know, getting a job in a certain field, being promoted to a certain level, or completing a lengthy or complicated project or research plan. And so once you have that long-term destination in place, you can then figure out your short-term and maybe intermediate goals that move you towards your desired career destination. Um, and so all of these short-term goals will serve as these milestones to achieving your longer-term career goals. And these short-term goals are gonna be more immediate goals that you set for yourself to achieve your larger long-term goals. And so they usually will be things that you achieve in short time frames, anywhere from days to months to maybe even one or two years, depending on how far out that longer-term career goal or career destination is. So it's also important to remember that each of your goals may consist of a number of sub goals or tasks that you will need to complete to achieve your larger goal. And completion of the smaller sub goals gets you closer to completing your long-term goal and takes you one step towards that destination that you wanna reach. So you're, you're gonna wanna try to break down your larger goals and your intermediate goals into the smallest task goals or action item goals. So these are the set of individual actions you will need to take to accomplish the parent goal. And as you see in this diagram here, it may require creating a goal hierarchy with multiple levels to get down to that component task or action item goals that will help you to make progress to your intermediate and longer term goals. And so breaking down your larger longer term goals into these smaller achievable goals and tasks gives you frequent opportunities to accomplish them and to feel inspired to take on other goals. So if a goal you said is too large, then it can seem overwhelming and you may feel like you're not making progress towards it, which can make it hard to stay motivated and stay on track. So trying to get down to these task and action item goals, keeping your goals small and incremental gives you more opportunities to measure your progress, which will help you to stay engaged and stay on track. And so for these smallest goals, you're going to want to make them SMART. And this is an acronym that many of you may be familiar with. So it stands for Specific, Measurable, Attainable, Relevant, and Time-Bound. And we're gonna go through each of these in more detail. So starting with S for specific. So studies show that you're more likely to su succeed when your career goals are specific. So you're gonna wanna try to make your goal as clear and as detailed as possible, and also try to make it action-oriented. So you're gonna to wanna to specify the exact action you would take as part of your goal. Um, for instance, your goal may be to become a better at writing fellowships. So the specific action you might take would be to sign up and for and take a fellowship writing class. It's also best if you can express your goals positively in terms of what you want to accomplish rather than framing them negatively in terms of what you don't want. So for example, write the best fellowship proposal I can is a much better goal than don't make mistakes in my fellowship proposal. Uh, psychological research actually shows that focusing on what we don't want to happen actually makes it more likely that that thing we don't want to happen will happen. So that's important to, again, uh, keep that in mind as you're setting your goals. So moving on to M, which stands for measurable. So you're going to want to define how you will measure success. How will you know whether or not you've achieved your goal? You're going to want some tangible evidence-based metric that you can use and point to to say that, yes, this goal has been achieved. And by specifying how you define and measure success and goal completion, you'll know exactly when you've achieved the goal. And then you can take complete satisfaction from having achieved that. You're gonna also wanna make sure that your goals are attainable. And this means that they're within your power to, to achieve or within your sphere of influence. And this is where a lot of people get hung up. So, you know, it's really important to set goals that you can realistically accomplish. Again, to help you keep you motivated and focused. You want your goals to challenge you, but you also wanna set yourself up for likely success. So one of the things to keep in mind when you're doing this too is being realistic about giving yourself enough time and resources to complete the goals you're setting, especially given your other work and real life commitments. 
So, because setting unrealistic or unattainable goals can create a sense of failure um, and lead you to lose motivation. So try to keep your goals focused, tight, and achievable. It's also possible that you may set goals that are too difficult because you might not appreciate either the obstacles in the way or understand quite how much skill or knowledge you need to do what you set out to do. And if that happens, you know, be kind to yourself. Rework the goal with the new knowledge you've gained to make it more realistic and more attainable. And at an early stage, your task or action item goals might be to research and gather information on what it takes or what you will need to achieve your longer term goals. And that's totally fine. Um, and doing this can actually help you to improve the quality and realism of your goal setting. So it's a good idea if you feel like you don't really have enough information to set goals or know all the things that you need to do to achieve those longer term career goals, go ahead and set a goal that's gathering more information, doing that research. Another way to ensure that your goals are attainable is to set performance-based goals instead of outcome-based goals. And doing this helps to ensure that you're setting goals over which you have as much control as possible. Because again, if you set a goal or fail to achieve a goal for reasons or factors that are beyond your control, that can be quite dispiriting. Um, and, can and that can result when you set an outcome-based goal instead of a performance-based goal. So when you set a performance-based goal instead, you avoid that by ensuring that you are in control of the goal success. So an example of an outcome-based goal would be maybe getting your paper accepted for publication. So there are many other people who ultimately influence and determine whether a paper is published or not. So that's an outcome that's not really in your control. Instead, you can reframe this as a performance-based goal to say that I will put together the best paper I can by having my colleagues and mentors review and provide input, ensuring that I understand and follow the journal guidelines and consider and work to address potential reviewer critiques. So these are all actions that will improve your chances of getting your paper published, but they're all things that are within your ability to execute and achieve. So another common example of an outcome-based goal that I hear a lot would be getting a job offer, right? And getting a job offer, again, involves a lot of factors that are completely out of your control. And ultimately the decision is made by other people. It's not by factors that you have control over. So instead, what I'd like you to do is think about what are some performance goals you could set related to your job application or interview process. And then I'm gonna ask you to share those on Mentimeter. So I'm gonna put uh, another Mentimeter code into the chat. You go to menti.com, enter the code there, and you can share what do you think are some performance goals you could set related to your job application or interview process? So definitely having your resume reviewed by somebody else or you know, asking for advice on how to put together your resume. So conduct practice interviews. making sure your application materials are up to date to so your cover letter, CV, anything else you need to do, prepping for interview questions. So, you know, uh, researching what questions you may be likely to ask, thinking about how you would answer those. So conducting informational interviews or talking to people so you can get information about how to, uh, how best to interview, what to put in your application materials. Definitely. So research potential employers, so you know what you know what they're all about. Definitely. So hopefully you guys are getting the idea. Again, thinking about when you're setting your goals, what is within my control? What is something that I can do? What is something that's completely within my power to achieve? And making sure that your goal is related to that and not to not an outcome-based goal. Um, 
that may rely on factors that are outside of your control for that outcome. All right. So moving on to R, which is relevant, you go, you're going to want to set goals that align with what you want most to achieve, right? So that align with your values and your priorities and goals that move you towards or get you closer to achieving your long-term career goals. So each goal you set should be relevant and meaningful to you, moving you closer to where you want to be. And so to make sure you're setting relevant goals, you, you may want to ask yourself, you know, how will this goal, how will achieving this goal help me? Does accomplishing this goal contribute towards my larger goals or long-term career goals? Why does this goal matter to me? How is it helping me to do something that I think is personally important or meaningful? And finally, the T uh, stands for time bound. So you're gonna to wanna to set up a timetable to achieve your goals. And this can both help keep you motivated and on schedule, right? Both with your, you know, we're talking about right now your specific task or action item goals, but obviously you're gonna have timetables for your further out goals too, which will determine how quickly you need to achieve these different task goals and your intermediate goals to get to where you wanna go long-term. So time can be a specific date or it could be a periodicity with which you will do something. So like maybe check in or connect with one person in my professional network every week. So when you're thinking about setting up these timetables um, for, you know, like we said, you wanna do this not just for your task or action item goals, but also for those larger goals, so your longer term career objectives and your intermediate career objectives. And so your longer term timelines may be less precise. You know, it could be like in five years or in 10 years, um, but setting those up can help you to prioritize your shorter term goals and determine the appropriate timetable for these and for your task and action item goals. So before you set though these timetables, um, make sure you consider all of the associated tasks and the possible roadblocks you might run into along the way. And think about the other goals you have, your priorities and the realistic time you have available to work on that particular goal. So we're now gonna go through some examples. Um, and so I'd like you to think about these and you can just put it in the chat. Like we're gonna say, is this a SMART goal? So yes or no, SMART goal. And then if it's not SMART yet, how could it be smarter? What's missing? So the first one is build my professional network. So go ahead and put in the chat, is that a SMART goal? Yes, no. And if not, how could it be smarter? So Vince says, yes, does anyone disagree? Could be more specific, yep. Yeah, so, you know, it's, uh, it doesn't really say, you know, what, how are you gonna go about building your professional network, right? What specific action uh, are you gonna take to do that? Uh, it could definitely say that. It doesn't give you any sort of time frame over which to do this. Uh, it also doesn't, you know, how do you know when this is achieved, right? Is there any sort of measurable um, outcome to this? So how are you gonna measure success? All right, excellent. All right, next example. Present research at a conference and meet at least three people in my field. What do we think about this one? Smart. Could be smarter, and how could it be smarter? So this one also doesn't have a time. So presenting research isn't always under your control, right? You have to submit an abstract and get accepted. So again, that's also a good point, right? You wanna say, like maybe you're gonna say submit an abstract, um, if you're, you may know, you know, hopefully you know whether you're attending the conference or not, and then you could say like meeting three people. We don't really say like what conference here. Also, you know, what's the, what's the rationale for meeting three people? What are you hoping to achieve by doing that, right? Um, how is that helping you? 
Is that relevant? All right. So how about this next one? Sign up for listservs to find discipline related networking events in the area. What do we think? Smart? Could it be smarter? And if so, how could it be smarter? So this one also doesn't really have a time frame, you know. Um, also, again, what list serves, you know, and then what are you going to do? Again, is this relevant, right? Just finding networking related events, is that really helpful? Are you going to attend these events? How many events are you hoping to attend? What are you hoping to do with those events? All right, one final example. Go on at least five informational interviews every month. What do you think about that one? Smart, could be smarter, and if so, how could it be smarter? So oh, yeah, like, is this realistic, right? You know, and especially this goes back to the point of thinking about like all those action items and task goals, right? So if you think about all of everything you need to do to set up an informational interview, you need to identify a number of people you might like to talk to. You're gonna need to compose the emails and reach out to each of them to set up, uh, to request the interview and then set up the date and time. You're going to need to come up with questions that you want to ask each person. You're going to need to follow up with thank you notes. And then you need to, you know, maintain those connections like we talked about last time, right? Follow up email, connect with them on LinkedIn or some other way. So as you say, you know, thinking about like, is five every month really realistic, given everything else you have going on? I would guess for most of us, probably not, right? So thinking about, you know, and somebody said like, what are you trying to achieve from these informational interviews? So thinking about that, like, what are you hoping to get out of the informational interviews? And then setting up a realistic goal of maybe doing one a month uh, might be more realistic, especially given everything else that you have going on. All right, great. So now we're gonna give you a chance to actually write your own SMART goal. So we're gonna, uh, give you a few minutes to work on writing out a SMART goal. And you could do this for uh, a research goal you have, maybe a skill development goal you have, a networking goal, or just a general goal related to your career path or career field. And so again, uh, write out your goal, make it specific, measurable, attainable, relevant, and time-bound. And while you're doing that, we're gonna set up breakout rooms. And so then we'll ask you to share your SMART goal with the other individuals in your breakout room and get, and then they will give you feedback on how smart they think your goal is or if there's ways it could be smarter. So go ahead and start writing out your SMART goal. All right, I'm still waiting for a few more people to come back from the breakout rooms, but I'm gonna go ahead and ask you to share your final SMART goal. on Mentimeter. So again, I put that back into the chat as well, but you should also see it on the screen. It should be a continuation. If you were already logged on to Mentimeter, you should be able to just go ahead and enter. Go ahead and share the final SMART goal that you came up with after your discussion in the breakout rooms.
Excellent. I'm loving these SMART goals. So while people are writing in their SMART goals, would anybody like to share anything yeah, about going through this process, how they found writing a SMART goal? Any discussions that came up in your breakout rooms about SMART goals? So, um, can you hear me? Yep. Uh, so, uh, so the main thing that we kind of discussed as uh, sort of um, tailoring your SMART goals was um, setting a re reasonable time uh, of uh, expectation for how long it's uh, going to take uh, you to do something, how much time you have to work on your goals uh, as well within like uh, the hours you have in the day. Definitely. Yeah. And that's important to keep in mind. And also that goes back to our earlier conversation about being kind to yourself, right? And that if you set a goal and you realize, oops, I goofed, this is really not realistic. You know, the time frame I gave myself for this is not realistic given everything else I have on my plate or given other priorities that I have to complete um, that may be more urgent or more um, important. You know, that go ahead and reframe that, right? Reset that time frame, reset that goal. And that's totally, totally um, legit. A lot of times people feel like that's a failure, but it's not. That's all part of the goal setting process, right? And that actually means that you're you're doing what you're supposed to do in evaluating your goals and resetting them and restructuring them to meet your needs. Um, you know, uh, so if you you know, set something up that's not working, change it, adjust it. All right, thank you all for sharing your SMART goals. And hopefully this has given some ideas to, you know, as you're reading through these from the others, you get some ideas about how you might frame your own goals related to these different areas. And as we said, this is a process, right? So, yeah, we're gonna move on with the ID pre process. So now we've set our goals. Um, so now it's time to actually take action and implement your plan. So we're gonna go through some ways that you can set yourself up for success as you work towards achieving your goals. And one of them is getting feedback. So identify a couple of key mentors or coaches to share your goals with and who can give you feedback about those goals. This can help you to make sure your goals are relevant and also achievable. And you're gonna to wanna to choose something that you hold in high esteem. Um, that's always a good idea because you're more likely to do whatever it takes to reach your goal in order to make a good impression on that person. You're also going to want to, going to, want to select a mentor with whom you can be open and honest about your goals. So you may choose to share different goals with different mentors who you think are best equipped to support you or provide advice in that area. So you don't have to share all your goals with every mentor. Um, and so you can, again, you can choose which goals you share with which mentors and identify mentors you think are most appropriate for helping you with uh, any of your goals. So it can often be helpful too to have one mentor who's not invested in your current work situation or work output. So um, you know, even if your PI or your current supervisor is a fantastic mentor, they're unlikely to push you to work to meet a skill or professional development goal when there's a pressing grant or manuscript deadline or something they need you to accomplish at work. So this is also why having multiple mentors is key, right? To help stay, keep you motivated in these other areas that may not be as important to your primary research mentor. It's important to keep in mind that, you know, even the best mentor is not gonna be as invested in your career as you are. Like no one really is gonna care more about your career than you. Um, so this is why it's important for you to have agency in these conversations and in selecting the mentors who you think are gonna be able in the best position to advise you and to help you to get where you wanna go. So when you go into these conversations, think about what you want to get out of that interaction with each mentor before you before you go in. Um, and also be sure to listen to what your mentors have to say and be respectful of their time, their opinions, and advice. So learn to take their feedback constructively as a way to improve your goals and your ability to achieve your desired outcomes. You know, try not to take it personally or as a personal critique. 
So keeping your mentors updated on your progress towards your goals can also be a great way to help you stay on track, stay motivated, and stay accountable. Um, it's important that you have a strategy for staying accountable, and this can be it can be very difficult to protect time to work towards goals that are important but not urgent. And your career advancement goals and skill development goals often fall into this category of important, but not urgent. So it can be helpful to have someone to keep you accountable. You know, mentors and coaches can help with this, but you can also seek out peer mentors. So, you know, where you hold each other accountable to your goals, or maybe you have a project buddy or a goal buddy um, that you identify for a particular goal. And then you share your, that goal with the buddy and ask them to meet with you so you can demonstrate your progress towards that goal. Along with this process, it's important also to reward yourself when you've achieved a goal. Take time to enjoy the satisfaction of having you know, completed that goal. Absorb the impact and the implications of the goal achievement and observe the progress that you've made towards your larger goals or your longer term career goals. This is a good way to help keep you motivated. If the goal was a really significant one, reward yourself appropriately. And if even if it's a small goal, it's still important to do something to recognize that achievement or that accomplishment. Uh, for some people, the very act of like crossing something off of their to-do list or, or marking it as completed is a reward in itself. For others, you may need to find another reward that works for you. And so just like to take a moment now to brainstorm some ways you could recognize or reward yourself for achieving a goal. And so again, we're gonna go back to Mentimeter and we're gonna continue with the last, in that same code. So just want to share, what are some ways you could recognize or reward yourself for achieving a goal? Taking a vacation, so definitely for a, you know, larger goal, same thing with having a rest, going to your favorite restaurant, having a meal. Yeah, you know, maybe having a treat like ice cream or a piece of chocolate. Um, yeah, you know, if you can't, you know, maybe if it's a smaller goal, you just take a walk or you go and sit outside in the sun for a while or, you know, yeah, take a nap, get a babysitter for the night and like, yeah, have a, you know, read a good book, you know, maybe non-research related book, have a movie night. Those are great ideas. For some people, maybe it's even just taking a, you know, bubble bath or, you know, going for a jog. Doing something for you, basically, right? Something that you enjoy, that helps you recharge. Just even take a breath and reflect, right? Tell someone you know so that they can share in your in your celebration. That's also great. All right, to encourage you to continue to think about like what are ways that you can reward yourself for achieving your goals, both larger goals and smaller goals, you know, those little, little rewards you can give yourself. Um, so it's also a good idea to write your goals down. So thinking about your goals is not enough. Research shows that you're more likely to achieve a goal if you actually write it down. And so this could be paper and pencil, like you see pictured here, or you could put them in some sort of other written form, you know, in an online document, or, you know, if you checked out MyADP or Imagine PhD, both of those have ways for tracking goals, systems for tracking goals in an online environment. There's also other goal tracking apps and things like that you could use, but some way you want to write it down, you know, and uh, there's a quote from Lee Iacocca, who was a business guru from the 1980s, and he said that the discipline of writing something down is the first step towards making it happen. In conversation, you can get away with all kinds of vagueness and nonsense, often without even realizing it. But there's something about putting your thoughts on paper that forces you to get down to specifics. That way it's harder to deceive yourself or anybody else. So again, writing it out helps you to kind of conceptualize it, makes it concrete and makes it more likely that you'll achieve it. 
you're also going to want to set priorities. You're going to need to set priorities, right? You'll, you're going to have probably several goals you're working on at a time, and you want to give each a priority. This can help you to feel to avoid feeling overwhelmed by having too many goals at once. And also, it also helps you to direct your attention to the most important ones or helps you, you know, when it comes to crunch time, what do I need to focus on? What's the most important to me at this time? And when you're doing this, remember your self-assessment to help you focus on and prioritize what's most important to you. By knowing precisely what you wanna achieve, you know where you have to concentrate your efforts. And so you'll quickly spot the distractions that can really easily lead you astray. Um, you know, sometimes people ask, you know, there's, you may, you know, when you're thinking about where you want to go long term, sometimes you may consider doing something you aren't terribly excited about now for a few years in order to get to the position you think you'd like to have. And there may be times when you will need to do something now that may be less desirable to help you achieve your longer term career goals. And so going through the self reflection evaluation and prioritizing exercises helps you to make informed decisions regarding your career and can help you to be confident in choosing to take or pass on a job opportunity based on how it meets your current needs or how it will help you to reach your ultimate career goals and putting all those factors into priority into consideration. So there may be also times when you decide to take a job for another reason entirely, right? Such as maintaining your visa status or reserving a certain level of income or support um, to help you or your family. And this is why understanding what's important to you and pri prioritizing those factors is so key because it can help you to focus on what you need and to make decisions about the course you want to take and understand why that's the right decision for you at that particular time. Once you've prioritized your goals, it's a, also a good idea to translate those into your calendar or onto your to-do list or whatever you use to track the things that you need to accomplish. So if you have trouble translating your goals onto your calendar, you may need to think about how you can break those down into the component task or action item goals. So again, if you haven't, if you're having trouble putting them on your calendar or on your to-do list, you may not have gotten that down to the that component task or action item goals, the actual smallest piece of step of what you need to do to achieve that goal. You're also wanna gonna check in and update. So once you've decided on your first set of goals, um, you know. You're gonna review and update your to-do list, making sure you're keeping up with and putting your goals on your calendar. And as you achieve goals, reflect on your experience and review the rest of your goals and your plan and think about how things are going, right? If you achieved a goal too easily, you may wanna make your next goal a little harder. If a goal took so long to achieve that you found it was hard to stay motivated, you may wanna make the next goal a little easier or break that goal down into smaller steps or sub goals or task goals. If you learn something in a process that would lead you to change your other goals, do it. If you notice a gap in your skills while you're working towards your goal, you may wanna decide whether you wanna set goals to work on improving or learning that skill if that's important to you. And through this whole process, it's important to be kind to yourself. So we talked about earlier, it's okay to rework a goal or reset a timeline as you get more information or if you recognize that you have competing priorities, responsibilities. You know, sometimes you'll have to revise some of your goals, you know, that happens and that's okay. And that's actually part of this process. You know, there are times where you may feel stuck or overwhelmed. And when that happens, try to think about what's one small step I can take towards achieving this goal and then do that. And that can really help you get over that stuck feeling. And every time you revise a goal, try to learn something from that process. This self-reflection will improve your ability to set realistic goals and manage your time and that's an important skill in and of itself that will serve you well throughout your career. So goal setting, like any other skill, is something you can improve at. And many employers value candidates that have a record of setting and achieving goals. This shows that you can be a focused, goal-oriented employee. And often this is something that employers will ask about in interviews, about your ability to set goals. So improving your goal setting skills can help you to highlight your ability by talking about your goals and what you've done to achieve them when you're actually going through an interview. And we often talk about this process as linear, right? So we think about what we want, we set goals, and then we take actions to achieve them. But that's not actually the case. It's not always this linear flow. As you move through these stages, as we talked about, you may learn things that will make you want to revisit your goals or maybe even you know, change the career that you wanna pursue. You may run into roadblocks or your priorities may, may change. So don't be discouraged. Um, 
you know, go ahead and rework your goals as needed to adjust for your new career destination. And if something's not working for you, if a goal is not working for you, don't be afraid to change it or change what you're doing. It's also important to remember that your goals will change as time goes on. And this is true for your longer term goals too. Um, you know, as your priorities, as your values, as your interests change. And so you wanna adjust them regularly to re reflect your growth and your knowledge and your experience. And if a goal doesn't hold any attraction for you any longer, consider letting it go. There's no, there's no shame in that. There's no harm in that, right? This is your plan. This is to help you get where you wanna go. And if it's not meeting your needs, let it go. So, and this is why it's a good idea to periodically review your longer term career plans and modify them if you need to reflect your changing priorities and experience. Um, a good way of doing this is to schedule regular reviews for yourself every six to 12 months to check in with your priorities and to adjust your plan as you need. And so while you're in graduate school or in your postdoc, uh, I suggest going through this process at least once a year. As you advance in your career, you may want or need to go through this process less frequently, but it's still important to do this and check in on where you are, where you're headed, and how you're doing um, periodically, particularly if you're feeling unhappy or dissatisfied in your work or your career. <coughs> and so just to share some final tips for success in your IDP. First, use your self-assessment to focus your career exploration. So again, going back to the beginning, you can't make a plan without a destination in mind. So you're gonna to wanna to use your self-assessment to focus your career exploration and determine your ultimate career destination. And keeping in mind that your career destination does not have to be a specific job title. <coughs> it could be finding a job that involves a set of skills or allows you to work on things that are important to you. And uh, so, you know, it's important to keep in mind that the career landscape is constantly evolving. And in times like we're going through right now, it's evolving rapidly. So there are new jobs being created all the time. And so there may be jobs in the future that don't exist today. It's likely that there will be. So by focusing your career judges more broadly in terms of general job duties or types of work that you wanna do, you'll be more open to future opportunities that arise that match with what you want and what you need. It's also important to keep in mind that your IDP is your roadmap. Um, so you can use it to align expectations with your primary mentor. As I said, you choose what to share and with whom. And this is why it's really important to identify and utilize multiple mentors. No one person can meet all of our needs or be available all the time. Even the most supportive mentors will be unlikely to be experts in all areas or be able to advise us on all things. You know, if you think about the different areas you may need mentoring in, so it could be scientific and research, professional, career, school, job search and application process, or just general support and life guidance. And your research mentor knows a lot about research, but they may know less about some of these other areas where you're seeking guidance. So, you know, um, the other thing is having multiple mentors gives you multiple perspectives, which can often help with uh, giving uh, better solutions, more creativity, it also helps you to evaluate the advice you're getting, right? If one person says something, it may be their unique perspective. If a number of your mentors say the same thing or have the same suggestion, that's probably something you should consider highly following, right? So, um, yeah. It's also important to keep in mind that this process is what's important, not the particular IDP form you use. So there are many different IDP forms that exist. You know, there's some, at your institution, at UC Davis, at JAX. Uh, you can find some at other institutions. Find the one that works best for you and use that. Um, so I'd like you all you know, to, to move on from here and actually finish your IDPs, put together these career plans and start implementing them. Because again, like we talked about at the beginning, getting where you want to go requires a plan. And so I'll leave you with one final thought. You know, there are many different paths you can take to get to where you wanna go. You know, like the different roads on this map that get to this destination. So don't be afraid to change your plans and find the route that's going to work best for you. Your career is a lifelong journey, and so is your career plan. So with that, I'm happy to take any questions, and thank you again for joining me for this final session.
any questions for Heather? Lots of thank yous in the chat. All right. Well, we're uh, all uh, giving our praise to Heather. So virtual, uh, virtual claps and applause for for Heather. This was um, a great series as usual, and you know, just a lot of really great practical and valuable information. So thanks so much, Heather, for um, for uh, guiding our our trainees through this really important process. And thanks to everybody for joining us for the whole scientist series. And um, I hope everybody has a great evening. Take care. Bye everyone. Thank you, Heather.